been doing quite well. Things went almost back to normal. You know, I'm still hoping for the real normal. Um, and um, I'm still optimistic that we're not too far away from it, though the world sometimes seems to be more crazy even than four years ago. But, well, <laughs> we'll leave that aside. Um, we're having a good time here in Helsinki. We arrived yesterday and actually ever since we are on the road again and ever since we have released the God Machine, it feels pretty good. Great, you know, I feel the eight years. <laughs> there is no doubt about that. Um, yeah. I hope that uh, the next weeks and months will be kind of refreshing with regard to that. But right now, I really have an idea, you know, that yeah. there was some work done in these eight years. Uh, we, of course, did not uh, come here, didn't come here so long for it by intention. It yeah. was accidental. We, we took too long for the album, then, you know, the world got crazy, as mentioned. And <laughs> now we're just waiting to play here more often because it is a heavy metal country. So it's a shame we're not coming more often. The last <laughs> show was really yeah. crazy. And, you know, it was uh, intense, I yeah. remember. And uh, yeah, people got the right sense of humor. So it was a, yeah. a blast. And I have to say that to the defense of almost each and every country, that is the case wherever yeah. we go. Um, I believe that, you know, the social medias and internet helped a little bit, so um, it, beca it became a common law to say so, yeah. um, that uh, there are several spots reserved for the audience, Valhalla is one, Bad Song is another, <laughs> and I don't mind. It's not business as usual, so yeah. it, it strikes you differently every evening, um, but you expect that. Yeah. Yeah. And we, of course, play along with it sometimes. Um, since we have nothing staged, no, there's no, no concept what we are doing next. Of course, you know, the, the song list is more or less the same every yeah. evening with some minor changes. Um, but let's, for, for in instance, the uh, length of Valhalla is, Valhalla is conducted and decided by the audience mostly. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> we're struggling against time like tonight, so we have to cut the audience off. And we may sometimes overdo that without recognizing. And sometimes we might be too short and the people basically wanted a bit more. But uh, it's a party wherever we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember, I think the first show I saw was in 2006 in Bebop or Hofter oh, or yeah. something. So yeah. it gets pretty crazy there. Bebop is a crazy place. Yeah, yeah. it's a great place. You get always uh, chicken and french fries and you <laughs> sit at the bar and wait yeah. that the people come in and then it's it's yeah. a small club, yeah, but yeah. it's always very crowded. Yeah. And these are the places we appreciate a lot because yeah. then we have the direct uh, connection to the audience and you see people getting crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's funny because every time I mention I'm from Belgium like, and I mention I like Bebo, then the artists are like, oh, the food is great there. So <laughs> that's what we but it's it always well. the same, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it always a fried chicken? Yeah. It's a, <laughs> It's like a tradition, so yeah. everyone knows that. And yeah. you know, when musicians speak about the bebop or with the crew, you know, I do not envy the <coughs> people who uh, you know need to go there like six, seven times a week, or, yeah. or <laughs> probably six, seven times a, a, a month with different bands. Yeah. So then it, it might be a little heavy on them, but for us, it's uh, it's nice. It's you know, yeah. it's, it's happening there, and we know that, and we therefore can avoid French fries and uh, chicken. You know with the shows before and afterwards, so yeah. then it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I suppose that's uh, the, the reason for every good relationship. There is no constant eternal harmony, I, I cannot imagine. Not in a world where you want to be creative and you have visions. Like, let's say if we work with a whole band, it's like 70 to 80 percent, we have everything in common and we share that vision. Yeah. But it's about the other 20 to 25 percent and that of course gets a little more intense when Andre and I work because basically it's always a question whose baby it is a bit more or um, at, at which occasion who has who needs to take the lead you know yeah. like in a production maybe if it's a sound question then then it in many cases Andre is if you know if I come up with a vision for a story or for for the setup of the songs within an album then then it must be me because you know I, I may have a direction in mm -hmm. mind and it's things like that but also tiny little things like 
a piece of music. And the good thing with the uh, God Machine is that we really accept it to be heard. Yeah. You know, um, because if I throw out a part in a song which Andre likes, but I say, well, I, I do not see it as a connection. Sometimes you, you have a discussion about it and sometimes yeah. this discussion misleads because it's not about feelings, it's about the song. Of course, you know, you want to yeah. keep your baby as sane as it is, but sometimes if you cut it and if you, you know, mm -hmm. do a little bit of facelifting and stuff like yeah. this, you know, even if it's a young baby, you need to do facelifting, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that helps. And um, both of us uh, accepted that yeah. a lot this time. But yeah, it's a very intense relationship. I think we are both complicated. Yeah. And sometimes, in the way we maintain things, you know, we're not always straightforward. Yeah. And um, therefore, quite weird things happen sometimes. I mean, he he has the tension to occupy, to overload things, and when I interact with it, I overload as well. And uh, we always have to find a way to get rid of things more than, you know, yeah. keeping everything. But in a lot of cases also, this makes the magic of Blind Guardian, you know, that there yeah. is that constant conflict of, you know, information. Yeah. And um, I abused that on Beyond the Red Mirror, you know, that was also pretty good fitting into the context mm -hmm. of the of the storytelling. But um, in a normal case, you want to have straightforward music, no matter how complicated it is. You need red light stuff. And he is probably more the bombastic, partly more catchy guy at points, mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I'm the red light guy. Yeah. I, I have learned that over the last 10 years, that the red line is very important. And um, especially when I do my vocal production, Mm -hmm. um, that's what Charlie Bauerfeind and I are mostly aiming for. It's spontaneous, sometimes it's a book lying around and I'm thinking, okay, which words can I use? Oh, let's look, have a look in there. Or I recall a song I've heard and that like in Requiem, script from a Requiem, the script mm -hmm. came from the script for Justice Tears or All the Justice Tears, which mm -hmm. is a Marillion song. So the album was lying around and then, you know, yeah. <laughs> things happen. The first thing now coming into my mind, because it's the last book I bought, it's 150 years old, um, it's um, an old version of the Elias, Homer. Yeah. And yeah, I'm eagerly looking forward to read that again. And uh, this always opens up options for yeah. the future. Yeah. I'm reading a lot of historical stuff, um, but also fantasy stuff, but I cannot recall. I mean, mm -hmm. apart from the ones I always recommend, there's nothing in mind, yeah. but I, I really <laughs> would have to think about it. Yeah, well, you cannot keep on talking about Lord of the Rings all the time, right? No, well, you can. <laughs> uh, no. Technically. I, I technically <laughs> don't want to. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm, I mean, talking about something like this, it's not it's never outdated. Yeah. But um, it's not my first intention. Uh, yeah. That would be really Patrick Rothfuss or. Um, Brendan Sanderson at the moment. I think Brendan Sanderson has the, the highest variety of storytelling yeah. and all of his stories are good to be read. So that would be my recommendation. But I haven't yeah. read any, anything recently. What I like, um, and I was surprised by that, they used Blind Guardian music that might made it easier maybe. The Griffin, which is a story by uh, Wolfgang Holbein and his wife. I, I think it's Heiko Holbein, I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. but, um, and that was a surprisingly great story. And yeah, they they come from Krefeld as well, yeah. the same city, and that plays uh, an essential role in the storytelling. Um, but I, I think the story was done a great way. It's, well, obviously, um, the way they maintained it uh, in, the, in the series, it's a bit like like uh, Stranger Things, yeah. or um, what was the other one I was thinking, Harry Potter. Yeah. But uh, in, in a very good way, in a, in a German way, and that yeah. somehow fits, it's, it's not overacted, and yeah. I, I like that. There's always this moment where a request comes, and we just have to say yes or no. Yeah. And in a case like this, this of course, we say yes. Yeah. And why that happens, as like, like the, I don't know if you saw that, the uh, Wagen TV show, mm -hmm. which is also done by a German TV station, they also have well, like 
one or two tiny bits of uh, pieces of Blind Guardian. We belong to the Wacken history, so that yeah. it makes sense. But of course, we're willing yeah. to do that. Are there any instances where you would say no, like advertisements or something like that? Uh, it really depends on the moment. Yeah. I am not a fan of cancel culture or so, so whoever wants to use the music and wherever there is a relation, you know, can do it because the music is positive and if someone wants to spread this message in whatever reason, mm -hmm. even if it's welcome to dying or so, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's meant to be, you know, uplifting mm -hmm. for the entertainment and for the sake of people, not, you know, to convince you to pray to whoever, yeah. you know, or, or to become the Antichrist or yeah. so. It's, it's not, it's, it's the opposite. It's, uh, music is a very positive thing. Yeah. And whoever is using this as a tool, I would say, should at least be heard. You know, yeah. if it's something very radical, going against our ideas, uh, then we may say no. But, but in general, if someone wants to use it, it's no problem. We start with the first other songs. We, we did deliver us from evil. Yeah. But um, we have for September, of course, two more songs, which will be involved in the set list. I don't want to tell you which at the moment. <laughs> Well, you're not coming to Finland anyway, so it doesn't matter so ah, much. <laughs> we're not coming to Finland. You're sure about that? Maybe not in the first step, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah then yeah. you know anyway. Yeah, yeah uh, but uh, here we play Violent Shadow tonight. Yeah. It's just 60 minutes, so yeah, we just go for the classic. In a festival situation, that's always what we're intending yeah. to do. Um, in general, I, I would love to have as many songs involved as possible, and some of the songs are doable. It's always the same story I tell. Um, but to get them on the same level, we can play a song like, like for instance, yeah. for instance, Valhalla. Um, it takes forever. Yeah, and that's also not a song you could like cut out. I think the audience would be very pissed off. Oh, we did. Have you tried? Cut off Valhalla. Okay. We accidentally cut off like two or three times the Bart songs when there are oh. no acoustic <laughs> guitars around. Bart song is. Mo the yeah, most terrible the, and the, the most yeah, heartbroken for us as well. <laughs> yeah, um, Valhalla, we can live with yeah. it, you know, and people accept that. Yeah. Of course, sometimes you still have <laughs> the ones who scream for it <laughs> afterwards, but then it's too late yeah. anyway. It's in fall. We do many places in Europe. Main focus is Germany, which is our key market anyway. Um, then we go to South America, South America and Latin America. So we play also Mexico. Um, <clears throat> then we do the 70,000 tons of metal, then we go to Australia, then it's a few shows in the UK, then most probably North America, and then the festival season ending up at Wacken 2024 without any rain because, you know, ever when we are playing, sun is shining. Just come to the shows and you will see me and the other guys in all our beauty and we are beautiful.